continue on with our section on running jobs on Perlmuter. So a lot of the information that Eric presented will become uh, a lot more understandable in this talk as we go through how do you submit a, a batch submission or a job on Perlmuter. And so if you're brand new to HPC, we want to welcome you again. And throughout this presence, throughout this portion, we're going to talk about specifically submitting a job and how you can uh, execute your code. So again, we want to welcome you to Nurse. And let's talk about the basics associated with job submissions. And so a lot of you might be thinking, okay, what exactly do you mean by a job? So first off, could we get a raise of hands if you used a, a, a scheduler on an HPC system like Slurm before? Okay, we got eight people. All right, and so out of 19, we'll probably say 10 with Lippy, Eric, and myself included. So a job, when we say a job, basically what we mean is we're talking about you being able to um, do a specific computation on one of our resources. And what we mean by resources, it can be on the CPU, on a GPU, um, IO activity, you know, those are the basic components of our shared resources that we make available for you to use. And so a job scheduler is basically the software that you use to manage and allocate those resources. And so different components or different terminology, the job script is basically your instructions to the scheduler, what you, what you are asking for, which will detail the, the, the resources that you require, as well as the, you know, the file or the application that you're gonna execute. And then you also have what we call an interactive job. And an interactive job is another way of you scheduling a job for submission, but you're doing it interactively so you can see it execute uh, live. So those are the basic components when we talk about uh, a job. And so how are jobs managed? So on Perlmuter, we use Slurm for managing our jobs. And Slurm is the workload manager, and it acts like a, a scheduler for scheduling and submitting jobs for you to use. And so there are three key responsibilities that you want to rem remember that Slurm takes care of. It allocates the computer resources that you need. It'll execute and monitor all of those jobs. And it also manages the priority of the jobs that you use. So if you're not even, if you're not familiar with Slurm, it's going to be configured differently based off of different systems that you use. So the way that we use Slurms and uh, the queue and the priorities that we use would be different from another system that maybe is at Argonne or Oak Ridge National Lab or any other HPC center. So computation 101. So when you connect to Perlmuter, you're on a login node. And so this includes Jupyter sessions and whatnot. Uh, Lippy will talk next about uh, using Jupyter at Nurse. So one thing to make sure that you consider are that login nodes aren't meant for large com computational tasks. Uh, they, they're shared nodes by all users, and we only have 40 login nodes. So we they're good to use for quick little interactive and debugging. Um, so if you do a computation, that is going to go to one of our compute nodes. And on Perlmuter, we have uh, over 4,860 compute nodes, specifically um, almost 1,800 GPU nodes and over uh, almost over 3,070 3, 3, um, CPU nodes. Okay. And so when you want, when you think about it, there are two ways that you can access a compute node. And you can do that with the interactive job where you directly are able to connect to a compute node, use a command line interface and request a, a Jupyter notebook on a compute node. So in our, um, so with us, we are able to also do a batch job submission. And so with a batch, that's basically you submit a script, you give a time and 
a priority and then it can execute uh, either, you know, as quick as possible within a day or depending on the resources you need, it might take a, a couple of days before it is given priority to execute. So the resources that you allocate will have a large effect on uh, the, the priority that your job will have in, in executing. So there are a number of different flags that Slurm will need in order for you to uh, execute and specify the resources that you need. So you can specify these values on the command line with the interactive job, and you can specify them at the, the top of your job submission script as well. And so these flags include various ones to denote the type of resources that you'll need to use. So these include uh, the number of nodes requested, which is the capital N flag. Lowercase n is related to MPI ranks and tasks per node for if you're going to be doing a cross-node um, comp com computation. Um, dash A denotes, capital A denotes the account that you will use for charging. Uh, Q is, of course, the Q that you want to submit to. C dash C is denoting the type of partition that you want to use. And lowercase t is going to be the, the wall time, the maximum requested time that your job will take. And so if you want to do an interactive job on Slurm, you use the command S alloc. And basically, this is going to allocate a, a set of nodes or a node for you to use by default. And so here we have a, a, a simple example of those commands um, in action and how they've used. And you'll, you'll notice previously it's similar to what Eric presented when he was doing some of his examples. And so here, this is S alloc is denoting a interactive job. We have our dash A capital A flag and the account that it is being charged to. We have the, the number of resources needed, in this case, just one node. We have a time constraint of 10 minutes and our partition type is a GPU node. And so when you submit it, it determines that you're, it'll give you a number of different uh, alerts. The job is being allocated. It's queued and waiting for resources. It's been allocated and then basically executing as well. So with this command, this is a very simple way for you to basically allocate the computational node. This isn't necessarily submitting anything, but it's providing, it's giving you access to allocate before you can run. And so breaking down what I asked Slurm to do, I kind of already talked through everything um, in the previous example, but this gives you a little bit more detail um, for each line. Again, you have the, the compute nodes that you want to use. You have the the charge account that you need to that you're going to charge your your uh, job to the number of nodes, the time that is needed, and the constraint that you're going to be using. Okay, does that any questions thus far about uh, those specific flags and commands that you'll use that you can use for an interactive job? All right, and so you can use an uh, interactive job. Uh, in different ways. You can use them for testing and debugging your code. It's also good for profiling um, to specify that type of queue. You just do dash Q and interactive or uh, QoS interactive. And this allows for the constraints that are that you have to take in consider consideration is it allows for one to four nodes to be used and then a max wall clock time of four hours. Now, this is for if you have a... Uh, uh, exclusive access to nodes. Um, if you are using a shared nodes, then, and you denote that you want to share, um, you have half a node max, and then you have 48 max wall time. So this can include up to two hours, two GPUs, 32 cores, 64 threads, or similar to 128 uh, gigabytes of RAM for you to utilize, uh, et cetera. Okay. And so how, how do I get a job from Slurm? So with interactive allo allocations in Jupyter, um, there are different ways in which you are able to uh, access a compute node. Uh, we'll talk about, again, Jupyter next, but you can do you can access it from uh, within Jupyter Hub. You have the shared GPU node. You can do an exclusive CPU, exclusive GPU, 
as well as configurable, configurable jobs as well, if you want to specify specific constraints. So it was very quick and easy to uh, get a, a, a job using Jupyter Hub. And as Lippy mentioned yesterday, it, it makes things just very simple and easy. You can access it from a web browser very quickly and easily too. So if you need more time and more nodes than the, the four limited for uh, exclusive access, then what you want to do is what we call a batch submission. And so with the batch submission, what you're basically doing is you are going to submit your work into a queue and SLRM is going to schedule it for you. This allows your job to give, this allows for SLRM to give you more time to execute your job, as well as you can schedule more compute nodes. And so in this, in the script, uh, in the terminal screenshot below, we see I do a S batch submission, which is the SLRM command for a batch. And then you see I submit a script file. And this is the job script file that has all of those slurm commands that will execute. So once you hit enter and submit it, you will get a notification that your job, your batch job has been submitted. And this gives you that job ID that you can reference and go to. And the job ID is basically just, just that identification for the, the task and job that you've submitted. Okay, and so how do you submit a, a batch job? It's very simple. You just submit, you use the command to submit it and press enter. So within that batch job script, what does it look like? So what you'll have to specifically do is you'll have your specific flags that you have to set and you'll use the keyword uh, S batch with the comment as well. And so what this means is Slurm is going to read all of those options from this script, similar to the same way it would, would do if you used the S alloc. And so with this, in case, we can see uh, the different flags that we have. We specify the, the queue as being uh, regular. Um, we specify in nodes that we're going to use. We have a, a wall clock time of eight hours. This is going to be a CPU. Uh, type of allocation, and we name this specific job to be science. And so, and then this is going to provide us with uh, options for organizing how we want the output to be, okay? And so at the end of that, that uh, job script, the command that you have to add is srun, and then the number of nodes that you're gonna use, um, and the host name for executing it on on uh, Perlmuter. And so one thing you want to consider is that with Slurm, we have specific um, environment variables, and this is what you can use to set. So we have Slurm um, underscore in nodes, and that's going to get the number of nodes requested. And again, S run, that is that Slurm command that tells you to run the job. And basically, it's kind of like a wrapper for MPI run if you if, you're, if you've done other MPI uh, job submissions on other systems. And so, and this will run on one host name per node for you to execute. And so some, you know, high level helpful Slurm environmental variables for you to take into consideration. You have the Slurm job number of nodes which is going to denote um, kind of just like a, a breakdown. You will have the N number divided by those nodes needed. And you have Slurm task per nodes that you, N task per node that you need to use. And that's going to specify, again, how many tasks per node that you need to execute, um, like MPI task. You have the, the CPUs on node. Um, that's going to just denote how many CPUs are on that node for you to use as well as GPUs on node. And those are um, Slurm specific uh, components that are analogous to our, to our system that Slurm identifies and sets um, for CPUs on node and GPUs on node. And then a couple of easy ways for you to understand uh, a, couple of I, a couple of high level uh, performative constraints that you have when your job submission like you can do the total uh, CPUs is going to be the multiple of job num nodes times CPUs on node, uh, total task, 
Again, it's going to be the job num nodes times the slurm in task per node, uh, et cetera, CPUs per task, uh, total GPUs, as well as uh, GPUs per task too. So these pr provide a number of different constraints that you need to take in consideration when you're executing your task. And that's important because uh, if you, you know, if you enter something uh, erroneous, that could definitely affect uh, your job either executing completely or or affect the, the amount of time that it takes to execute. So you want to have a good understanding of what are those resource requirements that you need for your job and submitting. Okay. And so we have a couple of different options that you have to take into consideration when you talk about when you talk about specifying the, the different queue options that are available. So we can have our um, queue uh, debug. Again, that's going to specify our debug queue. And it's good for if you have just, you know, quick uh, testing that you want to troubleshoot or even profiling. Um, the limitations of that are going to be one to eight nodes and a max wall clock time of minutes. And typically that's just for, again, for testing before you scale to even more computational nodes. Uh, we also have our regular and shared nodes, and that's where what most of our users do use as a max wall clock time of uh, 24 hours and 5,000 uh, max job submissions. And so you just denote the queue. The, the, the quality the quality of service that you want, either regular or shared for that. And you know with uh, shared, you have a half node max per job. Okay? So those are some of the different ways in which you're able to uh, submit your jobs on Perlmuter. And so you can also uh, debug your script by using a debug the debug queue and specifying that specifically. You'll want to make sure that you use that flag for, for testing it. And then you can also do some scale testing where you submit the job on a number of nodes and then and you want to see how it performs as you scale it up. That's how you can test whether um, how, um, how parallelized your code is and how it scales up as you add in more processors. All right. Now, Slurm has a number of different commands that you can use, and they're important to understand so that you can uh, see how your jobs are doing and how the, the total process is going thus far. And so with that, you have you can have that uh, SQ, and that's just basically you are able to check um, the, the information that's available within the queue. And it's going to return the information for all jobs that have, be, have been submitted uh, on Perlmuter, I believe, for the, the, the past 24 hours. Um, so that can be a lot uh, that you would get. But you can also use uh, SQS, which will specify the, the, the number of um, the information for your jobs that you've ran. And so it'll give you a number of different commands that you can see denoting the job state. So, you know, if R means running, it could be pending as well. And time um, time column shows the, the time it's been running as well. So, and then you have the time limit and whatnot um, when it was submitted as well. So it's a number of different, uh, a different uh, components and things that you can do in order for you to, to check the progress of your jobs as well. So if you need to end a job or cancel it uh, in execution or before, you can do the S cancel command, and that is going to signal um, for your job to, to stop uh, running. Job, if it's running too long or if you entered the wrong command, and so it's pretty simple to do that. And all you have to do, again, it shows here, you can do S cancel and enter the job ID of the job that you want to cancel. And then you can check it again with an SQS to, to verify that it had been canceled. And so if you would like to look at the jobs that you have, com have completed in your account, um, Slurm has the command S account. 
that you can use. And that provides for accounting for all jobs and job steps that you've had in your, um, in your accounting log. And so uh, by default, again, it'll show the jobs uh, completed within the last day. It's different flags and things that you can also use with uh, S account and other Slurm commands as well. And so some of that additional, the additional commands that you can utilize, um, you can look at to look up completed jobs. You can use uh, dash J and the job ID of that specific job. Um, if you want to look it up by other attributes as well, you can, such as the name of the job and then specific constraints that you want to specify. And then, of course, you can also uh, pull different uh, jobs based off of the current state. So if something's still pending or if it's running, you can select and see uh, what jobs are in that state. So Slurm, it's, it's really a, just a, a tool that will help you to, you know, stay on top of your your simulations and the jobs that you've submitted. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about jobs in containers. And let's see, Lippy, is it okay if I take about 10 more minutes? Yes, I think that's totally fine. Okay, all right, cool. I'll, I'll just try to wrap that up then. So running jobs in containers, um, a lot of our science has shifted towards using containers for executing jobs, um, you know, with shifter and whatnot um, being a good way uh, for us to utilize that in our HPC environment. So they make it much easier for us to make our software environments more portable between systems. And they can also specifically help to decrease the start time of large jobs like Python. And so Nurse supports uh, Shifter and Podman for our, for building our images. Um, and you can build with Podman on the login nodes. Um, currently, we don't support Singularity or Aptainer on Perlmuter. Uh, things change, but that is cur currently we do not. Uh, and I know that we're looking at other type of container technologies as well. So we try to be fluid in meeting the needs of our, our users and being aware of the current state of um, science and how users are getting their um, jobs completed. So if you do not know what a container is, um, a container is just a way for you to pack all of your software up into a nice little uh, package of a bow. Um, it's nice depending on how how you feel about working with containers. Um, sometimes it can be frustrating, but you know, that's life. Um, and so you can build them on your on any computer with a build it and then you ship it to a, the rep a Docker repository and then you can run it as well. And so within Docker, we do support that for running it with um, Shifter as well. And so where do you ship your container to? And so in order for you to register um, for a nurse on Perlmuter, you can use the registry.nurse.gov. And then basically you can do your Docker build dash T and then enter appropriate credentials for what you're going to enter, the, the registry as well as the account, as well as the, the name and whatnot. And then you can do uh, to ship it, you know, you'll, do these commands as well. And then once that is completed, you're able to execute and run with uh, Shifter or, or Podman on Perlmuter. Uh, we have extensive uh, documentation um, and detailed steps to walk you through uh, this process as well. And then we also do have um, previously Shifter um, training that has been completed um, and the training is very detailed and it really it easily walks you through step by step the process. So if you're new to working with containers or you're not comfortable, we encourage you to look at those previously provided trainings and we'll put a link to that direct page for you to access to walk through some of these concepts. But again, this running jobs is just giving you a bird's eye view of some of the different ways that you're able to run jobs on Perlmuter. 
So how do you how do you run a shifter container, you ask? Well, you'll pull your image before you start, start your job. So you can pull that from the registry and you'll have the image and the tag that you're pulling. And you basically have your script here that shows what your the commands and whatnot. And then you have your flag for the image that you're going to pull. And then for your SRON command, you just want to make note that you're going to be making use of Shifter for it. So pretty, pretty simple way. Once you have your image set up and everything and you have access to it, you can run it just like a regular job on Promuter. So pretty quick and simple once you're at that point. So how do you run um, a shifter container and the different options that are available? Um, you have the, the type of volume that you want to execute it on. Um, if you have set up a specific uh, environment that you're gonna use for it, you can denote that. Um, and then there are other different flags that you are able to use as well. Um, you can specify specific modules and whatnot that you need to include. Um, again, a, a number of detailed options and things for you to go to. Our documentation goes into great detail about that as well. So we have a, a question here. Can you use different containers within the same batch file? Um, you, you should, if they're all, if they're, can you specify a little bit more about, are you talking about independent uh, well, in, containers? In, at, the, at the top of your S batch file, you just, I think a slide earlier, or maybe it was two slides earlier. You have dash, da, dash, dash image. Yeah, right there. Oh, go forward one, maybe. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right mm -hmm. there. You have mm -hmm. minus minus image, and so that's specifying a particular image that you're using in that srun command. What if your um, your your script your your Slurm script has ten different sruns using ten different images? How do you would you have ten different like that? That's a good. I have not done it with multiple containers before, so that's a good question. Because you may have um, a container that's specified for one step, and then the next step you I, want to use a different container that has a different set of softwares in it. I think you would just need to. That is a good question, um, Eric. Do you happen to know if have you used Shifter oh. with multiple containers before? I've never done it with. I've never tried to do that. Um, but you can have the S batch behave as the regular script would behave. So you can just put all the commands that you put in the terminal into your sbatch script, but you wouldn't be able to use this line to load the image. You'd have to load the image manually outside in your script. So you'd have to pull in the image to the node and then run the node, uh, run the container interactively, and then exit it, and then pull the next image in and, and do so on and so on. So, so is, if you only have a single image, is the, is this is there a benefit to doing it this way, like in terms of speed preloading your image at the yeah, time that the job starts or something like that? Slurm will use that image to boot up the sort of environment that it gives you on the compute on the compute node. Oh, right. So rather than like starting with the default environment setup, you would it would just automatically pull you into that container. So I oh, you know, cool. like, again, I haven't I haven't tested that. Uh, but I would I would assume that that would go much faster uh, than than trying to sort of load the basic one and then tell it to pull the image in. It's just doing more work. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And you probably could do um, just like the chaining of that too as well. But now I'm now I'm a little bit curious, so I may have to test this out myself too. Thank you for that uh, question. If you could also. Uh, enter that into the Q&A document as well, so we can document that too. Okay, is this where I was at? Okay, yep, yeah. and so how do you run um, a Podman container? So uh, Podman is you can uh, pull and build images on the login nodes and then migrate them to Scratch. Um, so you can do your Podman build command um, with the image and the tag. Sorry, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. 
Okay. And then um, you can do your migration as well. And then you also have um, different options for you to use and then other shifter uh, modules and whatnot that you can use and specify if it's MPI, um, it's gonna be a GPU or if you need to use CUDA MPI as well for it. Multiple jobs and workflow. So if you um, piggybacking a little bit off of uh, the shifter and multiple images, um, you can bundle jobs with Slurm that can execute either sequentially or simultaneously. Um, you can use a Slurm job array that can take in uh, the same job tasks with different inputs. If you want to uh, do a, a number of different configurations on your jobs, um, we have different workflow tools that are available. Um, GNU Parallel can be used and it can be used to make small tasks and to fit into one node. And then we have other uh, workflow tools for more complex tasks. Uh, even with N10, uh, a heavy, for our next, our next HPC system, there's a heavy focus on um, identifying workflow tools that are um, in development as well for facilitating more advanced science. So that's an area that uh, NURSE is focusing heavily on moving forward to as well. And so if you want to bundle uh, multiple jobs into, um, into one batch submission script, you can just enter the multiple srun commands as well for that to happen. And so here you can just specify the number of different commands and whatnot and do it that way. Sorry, I had to mute a little bit for my pups. So if you want to use uh, job arrays, um, Slurm can manage those uh, each job independently. So if one task fails, it's not going to affect the others. Um, different use cases for which you can use this if it's for, um, if you're gonna do uh, some large statistics on input files, or if you need to do like a, a parameter sweep over input files, then you can make use of a job array to do that that way. And we have more detail. If you're not familiar with job arrays, of course, we have more details and documentation um, available too. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a couple of direct links at the top of our Q&A doc um, to more information about the, these advanced topics for executing. And then, of course, you can also use GNU Parallel for um, those submission tasks as well. Um, this allows for the for um, small tasks that can execute, um, and you can uh, reuse the, that that allocation for all of your tasks as well. And this um, once one task is finished, then the next one will start, and that allows for like a more efficient um, way to allocate and use things. And so um, if you have more complex workflows um, with dependencies, you can use like a workflow management system that's available. Um, we have a number of different ones available that you could use, um, Globus Compute, Fireworks, et cetera. Um, you can write your code and be able to define that workflow and whatnot. And we have different ways in which we can handle those dependencies as well. Um, again, uh, workflows and resource uh, workflow management is a big heavy focus within the DOE. And we have a number of different um, trainings that we've done um, as well. AL Argonne Leadership Computing Facility and Oak Ridge have previously done a number of advanced workflows in conjunction with NURSE. And so those cross-facility workflow trainings or um, resources are available as well. Okay, and let me finish up quickly with best practices. Um, for your job scheduling, make sure each job has uh, appropriate priority value um, grouped by you know those specific flags or whatnot. A lot of the times, um, a lot of our errors that we get are from when users just don't have their 
their submission, their batch submission script, um, the flag set correctly. Um, that can always result in an error that um, your job doesn't get submitted or that isn't accepted. Um, main scheduler is going to use that priority list. And typically, depending on how the activity, it can schedule within a few days or within a day, depending on how much. Uh, again, you have to, it's, it's, you want to make sure you monitor the queue to determine um, priority and how full it is. The fuller the queue is, um, and if you're using a lot of resources, the longer it's going to take for your job to be scheduled. So tips, one job with the large allocation. Um, per node priority aging is the highest. Um, that can get scheduled first if you have just one large job with one job with a large allocation. Um, shorter time length jobs are a lot easier to backfill and to jump over some of those larger and longer jobs. So you want to just make sure you choose the right time from Slurm to make sure you balance that appropriately. And a, one, a very helpful uh, thing that um, Eric mentioned is that we do have our job script generator. And it's very simple. You can enter all of these parameters and then it will essentially generate the script that you need to submit. So that's a, a very safe, you know, automated way for if you don't know, if you're a little confused about the some of the flags to submit, um, the, use our job script generator. And so again, there are also options for OpenMP um, for using uh, within Slurm. You can specify the number of threads, uh, binding, and the placement of the cores as, as well for you to use. And I believe that is okay for NUMA performance. You can bind again the cores to different tasks. Um, you want to make sure to remember that. Uh, the MPI task needs to be less than or equal to the number of cores, and what CPU binding is related to those threads, and MPI task should be larger than the number of cores that you're going to use. Okay. Set. And then we have a few more example of the number of, if you're going to use a hybrid MPI and open MP code, um, other constraints that you need to consider. Um, make sure that you give enough of the CPUs to be able to use OpenMP threads efficiently um, so that you don't have too much thread contention, which will um, which will uh, negate your performance. And then we have other options if you need to specify how many GPUs per task and specific GPU binding as well. So a number of different options that are available when it comes to executing these jobs. Uh, my best advice would be to make sure that you have a good understanding of um, the workload requirements of your application and focus on identifying, okay, what is the most efficient uh, number of uh, GPUs or cores that you need to use. And then from there, you can determine if there are other options available, if it's can be uh, parallelized using OpenMP or uh, MPI or whatnot as well. And I think that is everything uh, we have covered. Again, the nurse documentation and our job script generator are two amazing tools for you to make use of. And with that, uh, I saw, I think one comment or question Oh, comment? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you, Scott. We will make sure that we uh, bring that to our training leads' attention on the workshop for fireworks. Awesome. All right. And I will stop sharing.